Hi, good afternoon everyone. Um, welcome to the Hangout um, with Altium and about the Circuit Studio. So I'm joined here today with um, Lawrence Romine from Altium and also Marisol Salgado from Element 14. My name's Jen Patterson, I'm also from Element 14. Um, so I'm going to hand straight over to um, Lawrence to get started on showing an overview of Circuit Studio, but we have enabled the Q&A app, so if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask throughout the Hangout, please feel free to ask them, um, and what we'll do is we'll actually answer the questions towards the end of the Hangout. Um, so I'll hang, hand over to you, um, Lawrence, now. Great, thank you, Jen. Uh, so as Jen said, my name is Lawrence Romine, and just uh, give everybody a bit of an <clears throat> introduction to myself, introduction to uh, Altium, and then we'll jump in, as she's mentioned, to um, a bit of a brief overview of Circuit Studio. I'll give you a bit of positioning as far as uh, what we're looking to market space, we're looking to address with this product, etc. So, Lawrence Romine, uh, about a 16-year career now, dare I say, in the electronics industry. Uh, spent a couple of years as a design engineer. Uh, spent about five years in the <clears throat> excuse me semiconductor industry, so specifically in the FPGA business, uh, and then now about the past ten years with Altium. So uh, certainly, if there's any questions with regard to the market that we're addressing, uh, the uh, product itself, of course, Altium, uh, by all means, uh, put them in the Q and A box, and we'll certainly do our very best. I'll at least uh, offer an opinion, if nothing else. Uh, so with that, maybe have uh, Marisol introduce herself as well, just so everybody knows who's on the phone, and we can sort of jump into it. Marisol? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Marisol Salgado. I'm one of the uh, Circuit Studio product specialists here at Newark Element 14. I have about 12 years' experience in the electronics industry, and um, as mentioned, I'm, I'm one of the experts, and I'm ready to help and assist or answer any questions that you may have. So, Lawrence, I'll let you take it away. Great. So, yeah, let's just kind of give you a brief overview of uh, where Altium's coming from, and uh, most of you guys would likely know a uh, fairly long history in the business. I would say we're one of the big three anymore in the uh, PCB design space. Um, been in business now going on about 30 years, public company in Australia. Um, but with that, with all the great success we've had, we've, we've really been what I've said for many years now is a one trick pony. So effectively we've had just one product, that product being Altium Designer. Um, and as we've developed that product, we have quite an extensive development staff. Um, that product has grown in complexity and sophistication uh, very steadily. Um, and, and, and what that's done is it's really left uh, a gap in the industry, if you will. So if you look at, uh, if you can imagine really sort of a, a pyramid, uh, with really the sort of numbers of users uh, that would be applicable to any given product at it being commiserate with the sort of base to the pinnacle of that pyramid. Um, really what you have in the, in the sort of bottom end with the majority of the users, which you would sort of see the, the eagles of the world, um, some of the other products out there. And those products sort of in the, I don't know, 900 to maybe 2K US price range uh, and then from there, there's quite a gap before you get into what would be considered really more of a sort of commercially oriented product. Um, and we're talking about price points. So you're looking at sort of 2K up to about 6K US with really not a lot in between in a commercially oriented product. So that's really the area that we're looking to address is that sort of really right above where Eagle uh, might not be suited towards a commercial environment but certainly from a price standpoint um, beneath that 6k. Um, so that's the sort of area where we feel there's an opportunity uh, and a market space for this product. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and just sort of highlight some of the sort of key features of Circuit Studio if, if I could. And let me share my desktop. And full screen. All right, and can you guys, uh, Jen Marisol, can you guys in fact see my my workspace now? I can see it. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay, great. So, 
as I've mentioned, most of you guys, or I'm quite quite sure most of you guys uh, that are viewing this hangout today, likely very well familiar with with Altium and likely Altium Designer. And so the natural question always becomes, well, how does this compare with Altium Designer? And so I can sort of position that for everybody and say, while this is not intended to be a low-cost replacement for Altium Designer, what I can say is that this is, in fact, uh, fundamentally built on Altium DNA, Altium IP. So all of the sort of Altium-esque sort of stuff that you guys know and love uh, has, in fact, been retained. And really, this is the stuff that we're famous for. So first and foremost would be the singular, what we call unified design interface. So uh, this is, in fact, doing uh, schematic capture, PCB, library management, all in the context of this single user environment. So that's retained. Uh, this project structure, and as a matter of fact, this project panel would likely look very familiar to anybody that's used um, Altium Designer in the past. So the hierarchical nature of our design environment, the sort of project structure that we implement, which is this project document, which then uh, encapsulates your schematic documents, your PCB documents, your library documents, etc., have all, in fact, been retained. Other areas where you're going to see some real similarities, um, the library panel is identical, as you can see. So uh, we're quite famous in the industry for our library strategy, our unified libraries, or I should say our integrated libraries. That's all been retained here in Circuit Studio. Um, and so what you'll, what you'll notice if you are coming from an Altium designer background is that all that muscle memory um, and that familiarity would, in fact, be retained. Um, where it becomes quite a bit different, uh, maybe not quite a bit different, but definitely different, would be in the interface itself, however, when we talk about really primarily up here at the top, these toolbars. So with Circuit Studio, the idea here is that um, perhaps circuit board design isn't uh, sort of an, an everyday thing for you or your organization. Um, and if you look at Altium Designer, while being very, very sophisticated um, and very, very capable, um, the reality is if you don't use it frequently, it can be potentially a bit heavy for you. Uh, and what I like to say with Altium Designer is that quite literally for any given design challenge, there's likely 10 or even more in many cases uh, ways to approach that design challenge, if you will. And it really comes down to your experience. Um, and really your preference in how it is you implement Altium Designer to attack that design problem. Whereas with Circuit Studio, it's really been um, made quite a bit more simple and presented to the user via uh, this ribbon interface. So really, if you just kind of worked left to right on the ribbon, you'd really be able to get through a design quite easily. And that's really the idea here is really to present the user with a very, very easy, very, very capable, capable, and yet very, very professional user environment uh, for you guys to attack your design challenges. So if you work left to right, this should be fairly straightforward. Home obviously would have the sort of usual home things. Um, and of course, now I'm in a schematic design, so this would be the schematic oriented ribbon. Uh, view would be enabling you to place the various dialog boxes on your docking stations over here on the right hand side. Um, of course, you can save your workspace the way you've set it up. One thing I will point out that's coming up in the um, uh, sort of evaluators and early users of Alti uh, excuse me of Circuit Studio is they're they're saying that they're not able to um, bring the shortcuts over, and the shortcuts are different here in Circuit Studio. However, there is quite a few shortcuts, um, and there is a shortcuts panel which you could very easily pull up from the view menu, dock it over here on your um, docking station, and pull up at will. And you can see there's a plethora, if you will, of shortcuts. And as you can see, these would be the schematic-oriented shortcuts. Now, if I was, in fact, in a PCB design, um, same holds true. And you can see a robust set of shortcuts. They are, in fact, different. They will require you to do a bit of uh, new memorization, if you will. But the shortcuts are all available, and they're all right here. Another little hint for everybody, if you're evaluating Circuit Studio, is you can also just hold down the Alt button in any of these menus, 
and it's going to bring up the suggested shortcuts depending on which, which menu you're in. So if you hold all, it's a little bit of a tip and trick for you. That's a Windows-oriented um, tip for you. Um, as I mentioned, the project structure is all retained. Um, documentation is going to remain uh, very, very similar. So, for example, if I come over here to um, my, um, not project documents, it's not what I wanted. Let me go back over here. If I go over here to not tools, outputs. So what you'll see here is really a, a nice subset, really the, the essentials for uh, documentation output. So you can generate these individually, Gerber file, ODB++, drill files, the standard stuff, PDF generation is in fact retained. In fact, it's a smart PDF when you generate these, so it will be indexed. You'll be able to uh, navigate those, um, but you can also generate these uh, all at once. If you go to, and how am I missing this, Marisol? Not board shape. Under project, here we go. Generate outputs. So what you'll see here, if you go to generate outputs, is really a byproduct of that that unified design environment that, that, that we've talked about. So in other words, this singular place where you can generate your documentation. If you go to generate outputs, <clears throat> what you see here if you're coming from, again, Altium Designer, is really a subset of our output job file um, capability. And um, so same basic thing, you'll be able to come in here and individually uh, configure each of these elements. So for example, bill of materials, if I were to click on configure, you'd be able to come in here and group objects, stack them, add fields, remove fields, um, include your supplier links, which I'll talk about in just a moment, so on and so forth, um, and export those and generate those uh, once you've configured them all at once just by clicking generate. I'm not going to do that now because obviously it, it takes a little bit. Um, but so a lot of that sort of element, or excuse me, essence of Altium that everybody knows and loves, 100% retained. A um, couple things I'll point out as far as the uh, sort of uniqueness of uh, Circuit Studio uh, would be the vaulting capability. So as part of your subscription with Circuit Studio, what you get access to is not just obviously the live updating, which is going to you know, provide bug fixes, a new capability, so on and so forth, which I'll talk about in just a moment because we do have a new release coming next month, uh, but is access to uh, the content vault. So what you see here is uh, access to our Altium Content Vault, which is maintained by a team of Altium employees. And this is all they do. They do nothing but create library components. Currently, what we have in um, Circuit Studio or the Content Vault is a little more than 350,000 components. Now, of course, that's a bit of a double-edged sword uh, because guaranteed Murphy's Law will, will dictate that we won't have the one you're looking for when you evaluate the product. <laughs> That's not to say that this content isn't quite useful. And you can see, you can, be, you can browse that by just sort of generic components or by specific manufacturer. So, for example, let's just say I'm looking for some Texas Instruments parts. You can see sub, uh, subfolders in here uh, representing those. Or you can even just come in here and search. So, for example, if I... 30 and I hit uh, hit return that's going to present to you um, all of the MSP 430s and give it a second it's obviously a tremendous amount of data so let's just let this present itself this is every field available it's going to present to you um, just the fields that you've selected on your filtering so just give that a second and then you'll be able to browse the data that we present to you which is uh, quite uh, meaningful and I'll talk about that in just a second. So not only do we provide the schematic symbols, the footprints, the 3D models, um, but we're also going to supply to you uh, the supply chain information, which is really invaluable when we're talking about um, uh, selecting components that are, in fact, going to be manufacturable. Let me see here. There we go. So another thing we find when people are first evaluating the product is they don't realize that these panels inside of the content vault are, in fact, 
um, customizable. So for example, if you're more focused on uh, the packaging information or maybe the symbol information, you can adjust that workspace to suit your particular preference. Uh, another thing you can do is, for example, these item numbers are actually our item numbers versus these are the manufacturer's part numbers. You can manipulate these fields any way you like to view the information in whatever format suits your preference. So it's just a little thing to know. Um, but as far as the information we're providing, obviously what you see down here is um, a preview of the component, and that's complete with um, 3D information, so you can see this package, in fact, has a 3D model associated with it, and you can preview it, manipulate it, have a look at it, uh, symbol information, but I will draw your attention over here to the supply chain and life cycle information. So I'll start with the life cycle information. If we look at this, what this is telling us, and this is information we collect from the manufacturers, when the latest revision of that component, um, or when, we, when this component last revised, so this is a bit of insight to give you a sense of how safe is it to use that product. Now, of course, this is a, a Xilinx component I've clicked on here. Um, and so this is Vertex 2. It's probably fairly safe to use. But if you, if you, if you <clears throat> see a release uh, rev date that's quite old, that's potentially an indication that you might want to be a little bit weary. Also, another good piece of insight here is to look at the supply chain information. So this is a great example because what you see here is um, zero stock availability on this component. That's likely an indication that you probably would not want to use um, that device um, because if it's not in stock, as you know, uh, Element 14 is going to stock, uh, stock products based upon demand and market trends. If they don't have stock on it, likely an indication that you might want to look for a different component to suit that need. Of course, if it's a proprietary component, um, you might might not have too much of a choice. All right, preview. I've already shown you. So that's the content vault. Um, if you want to use any of these devices, simply right-click on it, hit place, pick the portion of it you want to use. It will populate right on the schematic, and you can begin using that component. <clears throat> a couple things I'll point out here is our supplier linking capability as well. So let me uh, go back to my projects panel here. Go to view, project documents, not the one I wanted. Projects, that's what I wanted. So if I come back over here, I'll just drill into one of these schematics and I think I'm going to pick this one here. It's got a good part to use. Here we go. So we got some logic here, pretty generic part. Uh, let's say I've decided to use this component and I've created this library and I put this part number in myself. I can right click on any device in the in the uh, schematic and click on supplier links here. And what this is going to bring up is this supplier links panel. So I don't have a supplier link currently asso associated with this document or I should say with this component. So if I click on add, it's going to put the automatically populate the part number here. I can hit search, and what I'm going to do is <clears throat> directly search Element 14 databases for that particular part number. And once again, giving me the opportunity to make a, a very intelligent part decision right during the design phase. And this, by the way, this information in this link will in fact be retained all the way through to bomb generation. So this is a really good example of making solid part choices um, by looking at the information in real time. So pretty standard stuff you'll see here. Let's just say I decide to use this piece of logic. Obviously it's from Newark. You'll see obviously a picture of the device. Um, you'll get a sense of what the pricing quantity is. Oh, by the way, if you have an account with Element 14, uh, your contracted price, if in fact you have one, is what will be shown there. You put your username and password in in the preferences and it will show you your contracted price. And then, of course, we're going to also supply you with a data sheet as well. So this is a great example. Let's just say this is the part I want to use. Hit OK. And that's now going to add that supplier link directly to that component. And that information will be retained all the way through, complete with the link, all the way through to bomb generation. All right. And as I said, you can do that with any and every component. Um, I'm not going to bore anybody with the you know details of wiring a schematic, but as I said, it is a professional quality tool. It is intended for commercial use, so it will have um, a lot of the features you would expect. 
cross-program, cross-select, all that good stuff is in fact supported. Um, on over to the PCB side, um, standard stuff if you're again coming from Altium Designer, the zoom all works the same. Uh, you can use the right mouse button to uh, move the design of the document around, so on and so forth. But the big one, obviously, is here we did retain uh, the 3D capability. Um, and same thing, you can interact with that design by pressing shift um, and the right mouse button, and you can orientate this however you'd like. Single layer mode, fully supported, so you can very well drill in and look at the internal copper structures of your circuit board, um, all that good stuff. Um, you can also bring in 3D uh, models. Uh, the way you would do that, which is a slight variation versus what you see in uh, Altium Designer, is instead of bringing in a free model, a free step model, you would actually bring in uh, a step model into a library component and name that library component your enclosure, name it whatever you'd like, and then place that into the workspace as a library component. The upside to doing it that way is that it actually allows you to populate that enclosure on your bill of materials when you generate it. Uh, so the 3D stuff is retained. Now, that's the sort of very, I'd say, 100,000 foot view of, of Circuit Studio, obviously. Give you a sense, it's been in the market space now just about two months. <clears throat> uh, it's been well received, but we did get some initial feedback and some capabilities we needed to add. So to tell you what's coming in mid-May and we're in beta with now, is uh, mixed mode simulation. So we'll be part of the singular unified design environment here. So draw your schematic once, simulate, interact with that schematic, push that over the PCB, go back and forth at will. Um, uh, very, very convenient. So full Monte Carlo, um, all the good stuff you would expect is supported. Uh, DXF import is coming. Step export is coming. So you'll actually be able to export this 3D model directly to a step model format, import that into your SolidWorks uh, or mechanical package of your choice. Um, also coming are some new importers. So you guys asked and we have responded. So you will be able to import Protel files, which is a legacy format from us, PCAD file formats, um, as well as uh, Altium Designer 10 and older, uh, including the board format. So Currently, we support any Altium schematic format uh, and library format, and we will be bringing the board formats uh, coming mid-May. So that's the sort of very high-level overview. Marisol, is there anything you wanted me to, to additionally touch on? No, I think you've, uh, you've done a good job of covering all the main points here. So let me turn my camera back on. There we go. And uh, so, Marisol, is there something you wanted to show as well with regard to Element 14 and how we're supporting it, how we're selling it? Sure. Questions? Yep. Um, so I wanted to take a moment to invite everyone to visit us on the Element 14 Design Center. And I'm just going to quickly share my desktop here. Take a look. So can you guys see my desktop OK? Yep, I got it. Okay, so um, on the Element 14 Design Center, we have a lot of great information on Circuit Studio. So on there, you can find um, documents, frequently asked questions, video tutorials, as well as blogs and discussions from other engineers that are already using the Circuit Studio tool. Um, on there, you will also, if you click over on products, you will also see that we have two SKUs set up for Circuit Studio. And probably the first one that you'll be buying is the, um, this part number here, which is the perpetual standalone license that includes the one-year subscription. And um, again, that one-year subscription gives you access to the Altium content um, on the vault, as well as product updates for that year. So after your subscription expires, then that's when you would be purchasing the second part number here which offers you another 12-month uh, product update and vault content subscription. Um, if you wish to purchase any of these, um, you can just simply click on Buy Now and place your order online, and you will get your uh, order confirmation and your license information via email. 
Another uh, piece of information I'd like to show you is if you click on the view the group here on this link here, it's actually going to take you to another page which highlights um, the different features of Circuit Studio, gives you more detailed information about each feature. On this page, you can also download a 30-day free trial. And you can also um, contact one of our certified Circuit Studio technical experts. You can do that depending on the region where you're located. You can simply click on the link and send us all your questions that you have, um, feedback, or if you need any type of support from us, we're ready to help you. Um, another feature from here is you can ask a question. So you can also type in your question here. And your question will be posted on the Element 14 community where you will receive a reply back from one of the Altium experts, um, as well as perhaps some other engineers that are, that are on the community collaborating with each other and may have some feedback or suggestions for you. So again, if you have any questions um, or any way that we can support you in reviewing or trying out evaluating Circuit Studio, you can feel free to um, send us an email via one of these links here, depending on where you're located and we'll get back to you with an answer or uh, the type of support that you need. So I'm now going to hand it back to Jen. Great, thank you Marisol and thanks Lawrence as well. Um, do we have any questions at all from the people that are viewing? Um, I can't currently see any. Um, I'll maybe just give people a few moments if they do have any questions to ask. Otherwise, I will close the Hangout. Is there anything else that um, either of you wanted to add, Lawrence or Marisol, at all? No, no, just give it a try. Look, we, um, we don't discriminate, so anybody that wants to try it, uh, by all means, feel free to uh, go to the Element 14 pages and, and download. We have recently extended the evaluation to a 30-day evaluation, so um, hopefully make it easier for everybody to sort of get their questions answered and get it, uh, get it fully vetted and... Um, you know, hopefully they like it and, and purchase it. Thank you. Excellent. So, no questions, unfortunately, but um, obviously the video will be available if people want to watch that. Um, you've got all the details from Marisol about um, where to ask us questions. And uh, so, out so for the time, and I thank all our viewers for watching as well. Hopefully, um, you found that useful and informative. Um, any feedback that you've got, please feel free to add it to our Google Plus pages or any other social media pages. And um, yeah, great. Hopefully we'll see you again shortly for another um, informative hangout. Thanks very much, guys. Bye. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Bye-bye.